Hey Facebook, I'm Katie Krause and look who is here. It's Jenny JWoww Farley. Make sure you guys send in all of your questions in the comment section. After our interview, we are going to answer some of them. But I kind of want to start with all the stuff that you have going on. You have a new cosmetics line. You have mm. season two of your Awestruck Go 90 series. Yep. I feel like you still have such a presence on social media. Thank you. A lot of people don't have this much post success after a huge reality show. What is Trying. the What is the secret? Um, honestly, I really don't know. I think you have to know because we. It was a very unique situation on the Jersey Shore and Snooki and JWoww. I think because we kept it very real mm. on both shows for so long, our audience kind of grew up with us. Yeah. So anyone that was in their early 20s, late teens, are now becoming moms, like me and Nicole are, becoming, you know, just like growing into their own skin, the whole millennial mom thing, and just trying to figure out life. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what me and Nicole are trying to do too. I mean, there you can write all the books you want on it, but when it comes to parenthood, motherhood, and just like being an adult, nobody prepares you for that. So I almost feel like people watch us to see how we do it, and yep. as long as we're successful, they're like, oh yeah, we got it. As long as Jenny and Nicole can do this, like we can do this. And as much as you guys have been through, you always come out on top. I think so, and I th and I think that comes back down to like us keeping it real, mm -hmm. because we own it, because yeah. that's us. So I feel like um, some people, celebrities, or anybody, when they're fake, they can't own what it is, even if it's a mistake or highs and lows. Like we're just like we own it, we learn from it. It's a lesson, mm -hmm. and we move on. What was the hardest thing for you to own when you were on Jersey Shore on Snooki and JWoww? I don't, the fights are hard. The yeah. fights are hard, and one of the biggest fights that I ever had with was with Sam. Everyone saw it, and I love her tremendously. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, she's one of my best friends. So to go through those emotions, I wouldn't say own it, but both sides of us, just, you know, removing the pride, which mm. is very hard for a lot of people, that was one of the harder pills to swallow is like for everyone for everyone and remove the pride and apologize and become a humble person so and I feel like a lot of fans learn that too because I think it's a lot easier to walk away from relationships and friendships and husbands and boyfriends because they don't want to remove the pride it's almost yeah. easier to like accept it and move on instead of like humbling yourself and like getting to the root of the problem and learning from it mm -hmm. finding that solution too yeah. yeah well let's talk about JWoww Cosmetics Yes. What inspired this? I feel like you've always had an interest in beauty. Yeah, well, where learning that, from it. Oh, yeah, my God. Where did that stem from originally? Originally, um, well, I've always been an art student. I love mm -hmm. art, but I actually used to do makeup so awful. Uh, no. Was, just rewind all the Jersey Shore and half of Snooki and JWoww. Um, but I learned from, which we didn't have back in the day. I'm not trying to show my age, but I didn't have tutorials. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have, like, these wonderful... Um, people in YouTube and cosmetics are able to show us how to do makeup. So I've learned over the years with my makeup artists and now watching them. But I also learned from them that products can be astronomically expensive. Like just out, like, you know, you can buy this powder for 80 bucks, this for 120, this, and like, I'm like, I can't, I can't pay these celebrity prices. I might be like a quote unquote celebrity, but I can't do that. I want my money to go towards my kids. And that's where I started thinking of like, I want to build a line for like the everyday woman. The woman that is a mom that doesn't want to spend a ton of money on mm -hmm. makeup. The college student that's broke. I was there, ramen noodles and Red Bull every day. Like that was my life, that's all I could afford. I think um, we've all been there, right? Yeah. Struggle city. Str and the high school, and like high school girls, but like at the end of the day, they still want to buy makeup. So I'm trying to give them like that happy medium where they don't have to go to the drugstore mm -hmm. and they don't have to buy the celebrity bougie $150 stuff, I want to give them the best quality I can give them and also give it at a very reasonable price. Yeah. So that's where I, I came up with it. It sounds like you're super involved in the process. Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah. Because from beginning to end, I've always wanted to do it, but I wanted to do it right. Mm -hmm. Cruelty free. I wanted all the ingredients as natural as possible. I wanted to make sure that they're getting every ounce of their money, every dime that they spent, it went towards this product. So it took a long time. It took over a year. And I just wanted it to be fair for my um, buyers and my fans. 
Will we see the process kind of come to life and go through all the different steps on the Awestruck series at all? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we'll see the behind the scenes. That's the best part of Awestruck and Go90 and Nicole and I's um, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. We're continuing Snooki and JWoww from MTV. But now Which you get to see, them. yeah, our work, mm -hmm. um, what we do every day in life with our children. Um, how to survive being a mom, which some days it's easy. Some days I look at my kids when they're sleeping and I go, oh my God, thank God you're sleeping because I just, just stay sleeping for like the next 12 hours. Like, That's all moms, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna drink this bottle of tequila and unwind. Um, and, and you get to see that all on our show. So it's just a continuation where you see everything. But mm -hmm. what we love the most is that you get to see our children and our work, which is something that never been done on the show. On MTV, like, they never showed, like, us as celebrities. Right. So now you can. We get to see all of that. All of it. Well, let's talk about Grayson, because you had him in May. Mm -hmm. My little chubby monkey. Oh, he's so cute on your Instagram, I gotta say. He's 20 pounds. Ooh, he's <laughs> a big guy. He's big. Um, this is so embarrassing. I can't even believe I'm admitting this. But I gave Roger all the outfits for uh, Milani and Grayson for daycare this week. So prepared. Yeah, very. Uh, Milani's two, Grayson's almost four months, and I give him the outfits, and Roger sends this really cute picture of my daughter in an outfit. It was Grayson's. <laughs> he mixed them up. He mixed them up because it's... my son is in enormous clothes, and Roger's like, doesn't she look so cute? And I'm like, why'd you stick her in Grayson's outfit? He goes, this isn't Grayson's outfit. I'm like, it's Mickey Mouse. Girls wear mini. What do you do? He's like, well, it fits her. And I was like, oh my God, my four month old son and my two year old daughter are almost in the same size. Do you feel like that's <laughs> often the case? You're like holding it all together? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Roger is actually phenomenal, phenomenal father. Super hands on. But when it comes to clothing, and then of course he comes back at me and he's like, well, you put your daughter's pants on backwards. So I'm like, all right. But. I know everyone at daycare right now is making fun of our kid and not telling you. And he's like, no, they're not. I'm like, because they're, they're not going to tell you, but they're going to pull open the pants and see that, yeah, this is a boy's yeah. 12 months. So funny. Yeah. You posted on your Instagram this picture of you at the VMAs, and you look stunning. It was this huge caption about how hard it was to really lose the baby weight this yeah. time. And I love how you started it. I actually pulled the quote. You said, I've never felt more beautiful. Yeah. Kind of talk to me about that and the, the body transformation this time around. Uh, that was a big, big, big thank you to my nutritional company because I, you, every woman has self-doubt, so I didn't think it was going to happen. And, and 310 Nutrition basically said, if you just give us a chance. Mm -hmm. I've been with them for years, but the old saying goes, well, maybe it's my old saying, you can't have a shake and you can't have pizza and expect to lose the weight. And that's kind of how I was the last few years. But with Milani, I actually never lost all the baby weight. So going into um, my pregnancy with Grayson, I was already starting out 10 pounds heavier than I was with Milani. So I had a freak out moment. I love the fact that I was pregnant, but then I was getting married. Mm -hmm. So I'm pregnant, getting married, didn't know if I was gonna fit in my dress. And then I was like, oh my God, if I'm 10 pounds heavier now, what am I gonna be when I have Grayson? And where is my self-esteem? Like, where am I gonna end up? Like, am I gonna lose it? Am I gonna feel insecure? Am I gonna like not wanna continue with my job? Because I'm on camera. Mm -hmm. uh, being on camera and the weight fluctuation and everyone judging, I was like, can I handle that criticism again? Because there's a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I had that I had that conversation with the owner of the nutritional company and I kind of broke it down. I said, I'm so excited to be pregnant, but I cannot gain that weight again. So please help me. So. He started me on a program before I had Grayson, and I started supplementing with the 310 vegan shakes. Mm -hmm. um, and I gave birth 19 pounds lower than I was with Milani than I, when I had Grayson, and I already started out 10 pounds heavier. So there alone, I was like, oh my God. Like, I can't yeah. believe this. That's a, I mean, that's a huge difference. That's a it huge. Is. And you look great now, yeah. Thank you, and then I lost another almost 40 pounds in the last four months, and honestly, no BS, like, it was my shakes and it was clean eating. And that, and you really have to want it though. And you have to work at it. And you have to because you can say you want it or you can do the shakes and you can do that, but if you're eating the pizza, I, I, mean, I just love pizza. I love pizza You too. guys need to be your own food category. Um, I love everything about pizza, but it doesn't help. So if you really, really want something, you can do it. And I really wanted this and I actually set the goals of VMAs. I said, 
I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna lose the weight. I'm going to the VMAs. I didn't even have a ticket. This was like way back in well, you May. You knew MTV was gonna. Invite yeah, you. but I was like, I. This is it. This I'm gonna be focused. And August 28th is going to be my day mm -hmm. that I'm gonna say that I'm never felt more beautiful. Well, you looked great. Thank you. You really did. Let's go back to what you said about the criticisms because I actually think you told ET a couple months ago after every post you feel criticized. Do you still feel that way? Oh yeah, but there's this new thing on Instagram where you can take the comments off. Do you do that? I did I actually I did it by accident and I was like, "Oh, wait. Now I can post whatever I want mm -hmm. and not have to worry because yeah, I feel criticized all the time." Um where I don't post pictures. So I'll have like fun pictures that I want to post and I'm like, you know what, I don't even feel like dealing with the comments. Or now now I can be like, well, I can post it and I'm just gonna turn the comments off. But that's actually, it's sad that it has to get to that. Well, it's sad too that you feel like you have to monitor what you're posting in fear of what people are gonna say because some yeah. fans really want to see your life and they want to see what you're doing. I had, um, my, my husband does really well at like comebacks. He posts it in the comment section or in this like the description section before you can even say anything. So uh -huh. he calls out the haters before the haters can even say anything. But he goes to me the other day, he was like, you have it so bad. He's like, they are vicious on yours. And I said to him, I was like, you know, I, I understand that they are vicious, um, but then I see Kate Middleton, who I look up to. I she's poised, she's beautiful, she's a duchess. She, she can do no wrong. Right. And I saw comments under her pictures, and I'm like, I have to be. I have to. I, I just can't accept these comments like I do. I can't let them get to me because they're doing it to Kate. Like they're ripping her apart, or Angelina Jolie, or like all these women that like to me that do nothing wrong, everyday life, Victoria Beckham with the kissing mm -hmm. her child, and they rip, rip. But uh, Roger's like, I was defending you on one of your pictures because they said, this is how bad it can get, like at the VMAs, you look, you're a drug addict and your kids should be taken away from you. And Someone I was said like, that? oh yeah, and I was like, okay, here we go. Here we go, like, that, like I was like, first, it's just so many firsts, but like the fact that like a picture and how I looked and how I felt under that description that you read, like someone will write that to try and like take someone down. I mean, it's got to be so hard. I feel like there's got to be nights where you just go home and you just want to cry or you have to like talk to Roger and be like, I don't understand because yeah. I, I don't understand how people can say such mean things to someone who feels her best and who's looking her best yeah. and who does have a great family and is raising two kids and running businesses. It is, and you know the funny part is, I met this girl, she was a viral sensation, Careless Morgan. Mm -hmm. um, she's overweight, she's 18, she's fabulous. And she owns it. She is so secure with herself that no matter what people can say to her, it doesn't affect her. And I kind of like, even though she's 18, I look up to her, I was like, you know what? Okay. Yeah. I don't care what they say. You're 18, you're new, you haven't even, like, you haven't even been in the spotlight very long, and you're not allowing anything to affect you. They're coming at you from every which way. I need to take something out of your book. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, um, the Go90 Awestruck show is kind of like my way to vent to show we are great moms. We're fantastic millennial moms. You can see how we interact with our kids. Me and, because me and Nicole are from a show that got a lot of you know, tons of viewers, tons of fans, but, but a lot of SHI, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. tons of criticism. So, me and Nicole, it's almost like a platform to just say, look who we are now, and look who we've become. And anyone that's young and dumb and naive in their 20s that end up growing up, there's nothing wrong with what you did in your past. You should never regret it. You can learn from it and move on and be a wonderful mother, wife, everything. And you can take it from us who are doing that. Yeah. Well, aside from just online bullies and trolls, how do you handle the media running headlines like, Wow looks so different, we can't even recognize her. Oh, yeah. I mean, how does that, how do you deal with that? I got, let me see, let's go top to bottom. Chin, cheeks, eyebrows, nose, jaw reconstruct, all that good stuff. Um, I laugh. I yeah. laugh because I haven't, but like I said, I learned from makeup. Mm -hmm. um, my weight fluctuates, uh, my tan fluctuates, and um, I love that. I kind of love that because the way that I look so different, I take it as a compliment because I don't want to look like the girl that was 25 walking into the Jersey Shore house anymore with no knowledge on makeup, no knowledge on... And I don't want to say not how to dress because that's how we dress at the time, mm -hmm. but like 
to me, just like, I like the evolution. I like the change. I like the fact that who I was at 25 made me who I am today, but now I made myself as well. And it's all growing. Everyone has those pictures yeah. and videos of back in the day, like, oh my God, why did I wear or look or be seen like that? But I like who I am now. And then maybe in 10 years from now too, I'm gonna be like, oh my God, why did I wear that on ET and did all that? <laughs> and it just, whatever. Yeah. Well, let's talk about plastic surgery a little bit. You've been open about it in the past. Oh yeah. But you've had to go and post, you know, makeup list selfies a lot mm -hmm. and you've had to kind of call out some outlets. What is your stance now becoming a beauty guru? What is your stance on plastic surgery? I have no objection. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm always the one that says, do it for the right reasons. Yeah. Like, don't do it because a celebrity has like a lip that you want or a nose that you want or something like that. Do it because if you're secure with yourself, but you know, like, well, my nose could use something or this or that, like whatever your issue is. Like mine was my boobs when I was 18. I was like, you know what? I love the way I look, but I want bigger boobs. I'm gonna go get bigger boobs. So don't do it because it's a trend. Do it for because it's like truly what you want to make yourself happy. And it is what it is. Like mm -hmm. I'm 31 years old. I'm not getting any younger. Like I'm going to do the non-invasive surgeries and things like that to stay youthful, to feel useful. So I don't, when I'm like 50, 60, 70, have to do the more dramatic ones because I love the way I look. I am totally honest and open with it. I do not want a saggy face in 30 years, so. Nobody does. Nobody does. And like when people hate on that all the time, like, come on. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm all about natural beauty as well. Like whatever your choice is, I just say go for it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this tattoo sleeve. Oh, because yes. at first glance, it looks magical and Disney-inspired, but you said it's kind of the opposite. It's the antithesis. It's the happily never after. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that a little bit? So I have Once Upon a Time, Can happily. you roll up the, just so yep. that people happily watching live can see? Never after. So I took the four biggest scenes in my four biggest love stories of Disney. Mind you, Disney now is a lot different from Disney back in the day. Um, where it's like the knight, the shining armor, the guy, the damsel in distress, the woman that needs to be saved, and mm -hmm. the king, prince, whatever, makes it all better. Um, tragically, it does not work out like that. And I'm all for that. But when I grew up, I always said, I'm going to have this perfect prince to save me and take care of me. And even though I love, cherish, and respect Roger, relationships are hard. Mm -hmm. Relationships... Um, take work and it's 50-50 and I love to work, he loves to work. So it's kind of like, I always make a joke, me and my friends do, like Disney screwed my perception of men. And that was basically my sleeve. Um, I actually went, before Jersey Shore, I was going to college to work for Disney. I wanted to be an animator. So I'm like obsessed mm -hmm. with Disney, obsessed in the most respectful way, but my perception changed. Like growing up, I'm like, oh my God, like why isn't Prince Eric saving me? And like what, you know what I mean? So I took the four main love stories that I did, that I loved, and I changed all the men. Mm -hmm. And so I made like this big scene when they were dancing, she's crying, Cinderella's crying, and he's like yoking her up. Like, you know, because of the fighting, like mm -hmm. women fight, men fight, um, beast is still a beast. Uh, Eric wants nothing to do with Ariel, he's kind of like, the douchey guy. It's the it's so the, sad. It is, and then like um, Sleeping Beauty is actually dead, <laughs> oh. and uh, her prince is like over, like over her in the big in the scene where he's like gonna kiss her, but because uh -huh. he won't kiss her, because um, it happens. It happens. Like it's you know, there's to me, there's no um, happily ever after unless you truly work for it. And these Disney stories. You know, Ariel was 16 when she ended up marrying him, and they only knew each other for 72 hours. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you really think about it. You know, um, Belle was trying to hook up with an a actual beast, like a, an animal. Like, Wait. those things don't exist. So in my eyes, I was just trying to say, like, you to have a real, true, happily ever after, it takes work. Will you let your daughter watch these Disney movies? Oh, we watch them all the time. Okay. Do you feel like she has that same perception that you had, though, about... The prince and 
The thing that I love about Disney now mm -hmm. is um, their new movies aren't like that. So like right. Maleficent with Angelina Jolie it was showing love from like a mother figure to a daughter. Frozen sisters. Sisters. Like I really love how they're showing like the empowerment of women, and you don't need a man for the forever. Mm -hmm. You can be happy, and you, your true love can be a sister or a mother, or things like that. I feel like when we look at you and we look at social media, you kind of have a fairy tale esque life because you do have two beautiful kids. You do have a great mm -hmm. husband, and you guys have been together for a really long mm -hmm. time. And I think you guys have also beat the odds. I don't know if people yep. really expected that. So, the, what is it called? The reality curse or whatever yeah. the reality is TV, like relationship curse? Exactly. You know, a lot of relationships don't. Oh, we hear a phone. Oh. <laughs> a lot of relationships post reality world don't last. Mm -hmm. So how does that come into play with the symbolism of your tattoos? Do you not do you not feel that it's a fairy tale? Do you not feel like you guys are gonna be happily ever after? Well, yes and no. Only because Roger actually he says he always like I paid my dues. Like so I keep my work separate from his now. He was on my show uh, for me, and now that he doesn't have to be, he would rather prefer his job. And so separating work helps. Mm -hmm. um, but you can have your happily ever after, but like I said, it takes constant work. We've been together almost seven years. Um, you know, day in, day out, especially raising two children, um, the differences with the opinions of how to raise them, and all, you know, where to live, where to send our kids to school. like. Uh, you have to find m happy middle ground on those issues. Mm -hmm. And in this day and age, I almost feel like it's easier to quit. Mm. And a lot of relationships, too. Mm -hmm. So we we are just always constantly trying to find that happy medium. And it takes work. What's maybe the biggest struggle that you guys have gone through that we would be surprised to know or that the world doesn't see? It's parenting. Yeah. It is. Um, <laughs> my daughter is obsessed with her father. You guys can mm -hmm. see it on their Instagram all the time. And sometimes it drives me a little nuts because it's daddy's little girl and daddy's little girl gets everything. And when she's terrible twos right now and I'm like, we should be molding her to be a little bit, you know, we should be more strict and mm -hmm. oh, daddy's little girl. So she's, she's starting to play um, us against each other. She'll be oh. like, mommy, for something, if I say no, going right to daddy so I mean I'm sure everybody goes to that especially with a girl and daddy I was the same way with my dad I'm sure mm -hmm. you it's just but now that I'm living it I'm like oh my God, this is karma do you feel like you are more bad cop and he's more good cop yeah yeah oh yeah oh yeah but um you know I, I every family and every friend that I've dealt with and I've talked to about this situation, mm -hmm. um, they all say the same thing. I mean, little girls and their fathers. It's true. Yeah. Snooki told us, for her and Gianni, divorce is not an option. Do mm -hmm. you feel like you and Roger live by that same mentality? No. No, because they're, they're deal breakers in our relationship that um, we would separate over, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like the cheating or, you know, affairs, things like that. Um, things that you can't go back, like you can't go back in time and fix. Cause like when I always say like when the damage is done, it's done. But thank God we've never had to deal with that. Right. Um, but yeah, I would never say it's not an option because if you're truly unhappy, you shouldn't stay in a relationship. But you're happy right now. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's my best friend. He's the only person in this world that puts me in my place. So I actually respect him even more for that, and mm -hmm. I love him for that, um, because he can call me out on my BS. Yeah. Do you guys want to have more kids? Have oh, my that? God, no. No more kids, just two, that's it. Oh, my God, no. I wanted three so bad until I had two, until I had actually my daughter. My daughter is such a handful, but I was like, I was an only child. I cannot have an only child. I have only child syndrome. I cannot give that to my daughter. Cannot have her be spoiled. I need another one. And I had my son, I'm like, okay, we're done. Like, I don't, I can't. Yeah. If I had two girls, uh -uh. Handful. Yeah. yeah. My son is, oh, he's just my little mashed potato. He is so happy and lovable and chunky. Like, he's the best baby. And my daughter, she's a handful, but she is the spitting image of me. Mm. That's karma. Mm hmm She's very pretty, though. Thank you. She Thank you. looks like she's going to be a heartbreaker one day. <laughs> I just need Roger to maintain his size and stature so I don't have to be the one to scare up the boys, <laughs> right. which I have no problem doing. 
Um, I saw that you and Snooki took the kids back to the Jersey Shore house. What was that experience like, and do you think that you're gonna let them watch Jersey Shore? Mm. You know, that question comes up a lot, and I always treat it like Santa. Mm. Um, I don't wanna be, I don't want her friends in school to be the ones to tell her that Santa isn't real. Ooh. Same thing with Jersey Shore. I don't want her friends in school to be the ones to say, your mom was on Jersey Shore. Mm -hmm. So I don't know when that time is gonna be, because uh, every year past, I feel like people get younger and younger and younger when they know and learn things because of the internet and cell phones and TV. So what I didn't know, what I learned at like 13, 14, kids are learning at like six, seven now. It's scary. It, it really is. So I don't, they're gonna have to know because it's gonna be like the Santa situation. It's gonna be someone that's gonna ruin it. Yeah. And I'm gonna have to have that conversation. So I would love it to be me. I just don't know when. Okay. Anything that you find cringeworthy that you're like, I just wish that they didn't have to see that moment? No, only because I can throw it in their face and be like, well, it paid for your college. Oh, that's a good, yeah. yeah. So as much as you're embarrassed by your mom, which you would be embarrassed uh, for anything, because I'm your mom mm -hmm. and you're gonna get to that level in life where you're like, oh my God, you're so embarrassing. Just be embarrassed, that's fine, but know that your college is paid for mm -hmm. and you cannot complain. Yeah. So. When you look back at episodes, what's the biggest change in yourself that you see? Uh, like the, um, evolution of JWoww kind of yeah. just like when I look I'm like oh my god I'm like this spray tan at 25 or my skunk gym tan hair. laundry yeah or like the slingback shirts that are just like rolling out of bed with like an eyelash and well I still do that but it's not on camera but um <laughs> just like my look or I was gonna say my attitude but my attitude's still there um, I always loved the fact that on the show, and it was very true to me I never fought for me I fought for mm -hmm. my friends and mm -hmm. I'm still the same person but I'm glad that I've learned good skincare and makeup. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. Do you? I know you, you're very close still with Snooki, but what about some of the other guys? What about Vinny and Mike and Polly? I actually was on a show recently with Mike. Um, we haven't seen each other in years, so when I went on it, we got a little teary-eyed. I'm not gonna say when and where, so you, it's a big surprise. Okay. Yeah, it was really nice because we weren't talking for a few years. Um, but Ronnie, Vinny, Polly, Sam, Dina, very close. Roger actually stole Ronnie from me. He talks one more. They talk, yeah. yeah. Why did you and Mike not talk for so long? I don't think anyone really did. Mm -hmm. um, it just, we all just parted ways after the show and he chose a path and we chose one and we all got a little busy, but it was just one that I never, yeah, truthfully didn't speak to. And then when we saw each other, and since then we talk. Okay, so you guys are, you guys talk now. And yeah. How is he? He's awesome. He's, He's awesome. Good. He looked fantastic. Um, so it was just very, it was just beautiful to see him the way that he was. Looks fantastic. Is he married, single, what's? I think he's, he's like a lost long-term girlfriend. If if um, his old high school sweetheart, and now they've been together for a few years. Oh wow! Yeah, that's cute. I didn't get to meet her, but I, I'm pretty sure they're still together. It's crazy because he really went MIA. He's been under the radar for so long, and mm -hmm. all of you guys shot to superstardom and fame, and he's really been just yeah. out of the spotlight. Yeah, I think it's good for him though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was it about seeing him again and reconnecting that made you emotional, both of you guys? Uh, we all went through something that nobody can take away from us, Jersey Shore, mm -hmm. um, all those seasons and that just um, what we went through, the ups and downs, the emotions. So I think that's what it was because it almost is like, why did we allow so much time to like lapse and like we just didn't see each other. Okay. So I think that's why we got emotional. Was it just the two of you or is it yeah. a reunion with all of you guys? No, it's just the two of just us. Just the two of you. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Well, let's go back to you. Obviously, you have a lot on your plate right now. Anything else you want to accomplish? I don't know. I think motherhood is like one of those things that is, and every day, just trying to accomplish, just making those kids survive. Um, but to broaden the makeup line, to, um, I don't know, just do things that like my fans want to want to see, mm -hmm. uh, that they love from me, because for some reason I I 
end up with great companies to develop great products. So it's really up to my fans, like what they want to see me do next. So you guys, leave your comments below right now. We're actually going to take some. Right now, Becca over here is going to start sending me some. Oh, she's already been sending them. Here we go. Oh, 14 already. Oh, my God. That she's picked out. OK, here we go. Aaron says, how do you balance making time for you and your man with two kids? Mm. That's a good question. Rarely. Um, it's hard. It is. And me and Roger, there's just, I don't know, like, he, we're both annoying because it's, we drop our kids off to daycare to do things to get it out of the way. And then the moment we leave the parking lot, we like, we miss them. Yeah. So we actually love having our time with our kids. Okay. So we haven't done, which I know you should do, like the date nights and things like mm -hmm. that because the whole time we're talking about how much we miss our kids. Well, I was going to ask if you have to schedule a certain time for dates and for just time with each other. You guys don't do that. We don't want to. No, no, not yet. Maybe when they're a little older. Yeah. Um, Devin wants to know, oh, he says, you have plan do you have plans for more kids? She said no. <laughs> um, Nicole, how do you balance having a private life when you're in the public eye so much? Is that hard? Um, I, think I, I think it's pretty easy in New Jersey. If I was living out here, where like the paparazzi and everyone is so frequent and like on every corner I feel, it would be mm -hmm. a lot harder. But a small town in New Jersey, everyone just kind of knows me and yeah. I'm, just, I'm just me there. Just her. Yeah. Kelsey wants to know, any other tattoo artists that you want to work with? I don't know yet. Okay. I don't, I've wanted this for over 10 years. So I, I don't really want anything in the near future. Mm -hmm. But when I do, I'll probably look up an artist for it. Any tattoo regrets? No, I already got that one covered up. What was it? I was at a house party when I was 15, and I got one on my ankle. Don't recommend that. My dad actually saw it a year later when we were at Disney, love Disney, at a pool, and I completely forgot it was on my ankle, and you're like laying by the pool, and I put my feet up on the chair, and my dad goes, what the F is on your leg? And I was like, oh my God, um, it's temporary. It's, and he's like, okay, wash it off. Yeah. And you're like, ah. Yeah. Uh. yeah. I will never forget that. So when I turned 18, I got it covered. Okay. Uh, that one was a regret. It was just a fire flame, but it was like done at a house party. Cheesy. Yeah. Like. Ugh. So it's gone now. Gone. Gone. Uh, Kristen says, yeah. how does Milani like being a big sister so far? She loves it. She's yeah. not jealous at all. She's like jealous with us, but not with him. Like she like helps feeding him and puts binkies in his mouth. And she's so, she's such a good sister. It sounds like it. But with us, she's like, all right, he's, he's fine. You need to hold me now and things like that. So okay. she, with her time, she's a little jealous. Have they, has she said anything like, we don't want any more kids and you guys aren't planning on it, but has she ever made that comment or anything? No. No, she's really taken him. She's so sweet towards her brother. Aw, I yeah. like that. Um, Nicole says, you are goals. Been with you since the shore. Watching you grow up has been inspirational. Oh, and then Dino says, who could hate you? You're amazing. Oh, thanks. A lot of haters, but it's fine. It's fine. Because the people like this kind of... Yeah, and it's they these, make it worth it. Yeah, these fans make it worth it. Times a billion. Awesome. So. Well, thank you guys for all your comments. We're going to wrap up right now. If you want to keep up with JWoww, why don't you uh, say what your Twitter is and where they can find you? Yes, uh, Instagram, Facebook is JWoww. Jenny Wow um, on uh, Twitter. And please watch Nicole and I on Awestruck and Go90. Bye, guys. Bye.